Thanks for watching this latest video weather briefing. This will be an update on the drought and the ENSO monitoring that has been going on, as well as our current conditions and a brief outlook. This is Alex Tardy, Meteorologist, National Weather Service in San Diego. You've probably seen the signs multiple times, courtesy of Caltrans reminding us to save water. It may have also shown up on your water bill as mandatory restrictions. There's also the saveourwaterh2o.org or whenindrought.org with lots of information on the drought. One thing we don't hear as much on with drought is temperature, but temperature is very important as it keeps the humidity lower and is more of a stress on vegetation and overall drought. 2014 ended up being the warmest on record for California, about 4 degrees above normal. When you look at it on a chart and a series, you can see from May through most recently in April, we're still running record warm. 4.4 degrees. The nearest 12-month period is only 2.9. Here's a look at it on a map. You can see the warm temperatures have expanded northward into the Pacific Northwest and part of the Great Basin. The red shows record warmth for the past 12 months. When you look at it over the past 48 months for the state of California, the average temperature is easily in first place at 2.6 degrees above normal. This is quite staggering as compared to prior years. Here's a look at the month of March temperature average for California. Only one year was warmer, 1934. March average 8.2 degrees above normal for California. To give you an idea of what that means, one to two degrees above normal over the average of a month, you're probably not going to notice. Three to four degrees, you'll start noticing a little bit of warmth and warmer nights or warmer days or both. When you start talking five to six degrees or more, you'll definitely notice and it also will show up in electricity use and water use. When you have warm temperatures like this, especially minimum temperatures and maximum temperatures, those will result in increased evaporation, typically lower humidity, and more demand for water and electricity use. Part of the issue has been sea surface temperatures. Back in March, sea surface temperatures were much above normal, and it extended across the California Bight, as shown here. Let's take a look at precipitation now, which is most associated with drought. You can see this water year since October 1st, we are running not the driest for the state of California. Last year was near record dry. It came in third place. You can see the year 1976-77 still remains as that driest period between October and April. Precipitation since October 1st, as shown here. You can see on the left, that's our rank, so not the driest, but there are some areas that get close to it in the southern Sierra Nevada and southern California coast. On the right is the percent of normal. You can see the southern Sierra Nevada is the target area where the past year, at least, has been the driest. Precipitation since October 1st. Here's the latest information, including recent storms in May. You can see most of our region is 40 to 70 percent of normal. When you zoom up on the left-hand side image, you can see that it's closer between 50 and 75 percent of normal. And San Diego County and the Inland Empire are doing the best, whereas Orange County and parts of San Bernardino County, the driest, where those areas are below 50 percent of normal. The past 14 days in May have been very wet, some welcome rain to help suppress fire weather conditions, including flooding in the San Diego area. There are some facts on the lower left of some of the rainfall that occurred in one of the most recent storms in San Diego. You can see most of the precipitation on the map in the upper left has occurred across Southwest California and parts of the Sierra Nevada. What about the past 48 months though? All the way through April, we can see that California ranks as the driest. We are missing nearly 26 inches of precipitation across the state, putting us at the record driest 48-month period. 
Is this a trend across California with dryness? Well, you can see we've had other dry periods as shown on this map here. So not necessarily a trend, but notice the amplitude of our recent dry stretch is most significant as shown on the right. Here is one of my favorite slides because this shows individual locations in Southern California with a long history of weather records, especially San Diego going back into the mid 1800s. So what this shows is precipitation in the past four years accumulated on the left hand side then our deficit and the also the 2014-15 season percent of normal. You can see for example San Diego getting close to normal thanks to recent rainfall but our four-year deficit is still near 15 inches of rain which amounts to about a season and a half. If you go up to Santa Ana and Orange County, that area is missing 33 inches of rain. So they're missing more rain than they've even received. This year, about 50% are normal. And when you add it all up, about two and a half seasons out of four missing. Take a look at the other sites. Well, because of the extreme temperatures and lack of precipitation, especially over a four year period, here's how the drought's been working. Thanks to the very wet year of 2010-2011, which was a La Nina year, we went into drought pretty quickly starting 2012, and it accelerated in 13, and then really took off in 2014, as shown in the lower right. All right, here's a look at our most recent drought monitor, and most of California is between D2 and D4. That would be basically the severe drought to the exceptional drought, D4 being the most rare exceptional drought. Historic levels. The only improvement in California has been the northwest portion or the north coast with some improvement over the winter. This time last year, we were dealing with record dry fuels. And recall the fires of May that burned in San Diego County about a dozen of them were working on fuels that were more like fuels you'd normally see in September. So not only are we missing seasons of precipitation, but fire weather wise, when we don't have any rain in the spring, it has jumped us all the way into late summer or fall. This past spring, we had a green up as shown here on satellite imagery on the right. The green out was the most significant we've seen in the past several years. However, because of limited snow cover and warm temperatures, satellites were showing earlier this year in the spring that the difference between the way it should be and the way it was was significant. With Notice the mountain region showing up as very warm. And that's basically the lack of snow cover. Here's an image of the lack of snow cover over the past four years taken at Yosemite. Pretty startling how little snow was around this year. More local in Mount San Jacinto, an image of the snow in early April or what was remaining. Just patches of snow up around 9,000 feet. When we look at a satellite imagery, it's remarkable how little snow was there. On April 1st, 2015, on the right compared to normal on the left, barely could see any snow showing up on satellite as shown here, courtesy of NASA. Here's some numbers for you. Staggering numbers for snowpack. 2015 on April 1, 5% of normal. And that's coming off a bad year last year of 25% of normal, which tied the record dry year of 1977. Even in our San Bernardino and Riverside mountains, you can see average snowfall. We're not even getting close to it in some locations, as indicated here on this chart. It's putting a strain on our water supply. Our Diamond Valley Reservoir in Riverside County is now at record low levels. It's at 50% of capacity. And it does get a lot of water from the Colorado, but that system is stressed as well. Only 60% are normal this year, and the region is suffering from more of like a 10-year drought. Sierra Nevada, also shown on the right, as we discussed, 5% of its snowpack 
is going to be able to go into water supply. Here is the water supply across California, and the picture is not looking good as it continues to worsen. You can see the blue area is where the reservoirs are at, and most of them are around 50 to 60 percent of historical average. So they're half full, and they're already starting off half below or even worse in some cases where they should be. Here's a depiction of water supply as measured in the two major basins of the Sacramento and San Joaquin. Take a look at the San Joaquin River. In 2015, when you add up the past four years of drought, it is the record driest, so least amount of water supply. These are measured in million acres feet. And even the Sacramento River, which has received a couple big rain events, in the four-year period as shown in the lower left, it is in second place, and only closest is 1934 showing up. What's been going on over the past year, and really the past several years, upper level ridge of high pressure, as shown here. And this ridge of high pressure shifted a little bit further east this past year, right along the west coast. In fact, it has not gone anywhere. Our most recent storms have just come underneath the ridge of high pressure. Sea surface temperatures are only partially the blame, as we'll show some images coming up here, but they have been above normal. When we look at sea surface temperatures, we don't just look at the El Nino region. This past fall, a lot of warm water was moving west to east across the North Pacific. Here's 2013 on the top and 2014 on the bottom. You can see the very warm, anonymously warm waters on the top in 2013 moved from west to east and now are in place across the entire west coast of North America all the way down to Mexico. Meanwhile, the El Nino region, the red area in the rectangle, is also starting to warm as we'll show in the next slides. The reflection of these warm sea surface temperatures is indicated here as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation over the past several months, really starting in the fall, has now reversed to a warm in the red shade, which is, we've not seen over the past several years. So let's take a look at the El Nino and the outlook potential for this El Nino. Well, in April, ocean temperatures were beginning to warm further across the Enzone region. That's the region down near the Equatorial Pacific Ocean out to the Dateline. Also note the very warm waters that we talked about earlier that moved into the East Pacific and the North Pacific. Okay, here's currently what the El Nino situation is. We are looking at numbers in the moderate range, but since it's a three month running average, we are still in a weak El Nino, even though significant warming is occurring, as shown here. This is the region we look at in impressive warming all across the region from the Dateline to South America where we are now in a large area of one degree or more above normal. Here's a look globally of what it looks like. You can also see all that warm water in the North Pacific. One important thing to note, very important, is underneath the El Nino zone, there's very warm water as shown here. From March through April, it has continued and is slowly getting near the surface in the latest image in May. This is water that can come up, warm water, and really develop our El Nino later in the year, potentially at least. This is not that much different though from the El Nino situation we were monitoring this time 12 months ago. Here are our computer model forecasts of the El Nino and the El Nino is expected to continue to strengthen or warm through the summer months getting us into the moderate category as shown here and we really already started seeing this late spring then it's supposed to level out but maintain itself into the early part of the winter. That'll be key going into the winter with a moderate or strong El Nino would be key with any chance of having strong correlation to precipitation. The weak El Nino does not have much correlation at all. In fact, very poor for El Nino as we've seen of late. Here's a look at the ENSO forecast. So computer model or a collection of computer models as shown here. The dash line is the average of those models showing currently in May the conditions around 1.0 degrees and then warming up 
over 1.5 degrees in the fall period. Also shown on the right is the depiction of the El Nino development. So it's important to note that El Nino is currently going on, but this prediction is for it to strengthen and sustain. Here's historically what it looks like. You can see the most recent stronger in the moderate category was 2009-2010. There's our wet year showing up 2010-2011. However, that was a La Nina. Also keep in mind there has been some El Ninos like 2006 and 07 and also 1977 uh, not shown here that were severe drought years and also El Ninos. There's the big one right in the middle, 97, 98. That's kind of the benchmark. For July through September, the monsoon region is expected to be quite active, as shown here, with part of that moving into Southern California, but we are on the edge, so confidence is low of any departure from normal. Temperature, though, confidence is pretty high for temperatures along the West Coast to continue to be above normal does not necessarily mean intense heat waves, but it does mean prolonged warm conditions and likely above normal humidity along the coast as well, allowing for warmer minimum temperatures in addition to our warm maximum temperatures along the west coast. This takes us through all the way through September. Thanks for tuning into this video weather briefing. Remember, you can always support the National Weather Service by becoming a Weather Ready Nation Ambassador. And you don't have to be a weather agency to do this. As shown here, it can be businesses, nonprofits, academia, climate enterprise, and so forth. Visit the website for more information. Thanks for tuning in.